Hey everybody, John Wagnon here with Dev Central, and in this Lightboard lesson video, we're going to talk about gRPC and some security considerations that are related to gRPC. Uh, gRPC was created by Google back in 2015, and it's a powerful framework for working with remote procedure calls. In fact, that's what the RPC stands for in gRPC, remote procedure call. Uh, and in fact, some people think that the G stands for Google. It does not. Um, in fact, with every release of gRPC, the G stands for something totally different. Uh, as of this video, we're on release 1.36, uh, and the current, the, the current definition of G in this one is gummy bear. So anyway, it's, it's a different G name on every single release. Uh, but nonetheless, gRPC is used for inter-service communication. It's more efficient than RESTful APIs and XML. Uh, it supports a lot of different languages. It's very easy to use, it's very performant, it's very fast, it uses HTTP2, so it can do things like multiplexing and header compression and other things like that. Um, but one of the main reasons that gRPC is so popular is because microservices are so popular. And a lot of times microservices are running several different services and, and several different programming language, languages, uh, and they'll, they'll have a lot of service to service interactions as a result of that microservice architecture, right? Uh, one example would be open banking. Like open banking standards makes um, uh, an important impact to deliver financial information more efficiently. And so as a result, uh, financial institutions have adopted gRPC for their inter-service communications so that they can provide services faster and more efficiently, high reliability and scalability, all that stuff. So to give you kind of a quick diagram here, um, you know, you may have users uh, over here, so I'll just put, you know, users that are accessing your microservices-based, uh, you know, applications. Um, and you may have, you know, here uh, is, is kind of a, maybe an aggregator, so I'll just put, you know, aggregator right here. And this is going to have, you know, several things running um, in it. And then this may point to various applications. So I'll just put, you know, a few different applications uh, out here in these boxes. So these are your apps that are running several different, uh, I'll just put, you know, some things here like microservices. And all of these services are going to communicate with one another and they're going to communicate. Uh, I'll just put a few little conceptual, you know, this service may com communicate with this one and, and so forth, you know, however it may work. But as these services communicate, they're going to use the GR PC protocol to uh, to communicate, and so one of the uh, one of the interesting things about gRPC is that you need to think about the security implications of the protocol itself. Um, and so, why is it important to protect gRPC? Uh, well, gRPC um, is uh, is built on Google's protocol buffer, uh, shortened many times to, to be called Protobuf. Um, and that's the, the protobuf is the most commonly used interface definition language for gRPC. So, uh, so anyway, so protobuf is the most commonly used IDL interface definition language for gRPC. So there's a whole mouthful, right? Um, and so protobuf version three is, uh, is by nature a permissive protocol. And so it's, it's uh, vulnerable to various cyber attacks, right? So a few examples of the permissive nature of, of uh, Protobuf version three are things like um, it allows sending a stream of messages without the keyword stream in them, right? So that's one thing it allows. Another thing is it allows repeated messages or, or repeated message occurrences, I should say, of a field, even if that uh, field was not declared to be repeated, right? Um, another thing is it does not check repeated keys in map fields, uh, so only the last occurrence of a key is considered. Um, and then the last thing that I'll mention about the just the kind of the vulnerability, the open nature of Proto uh, Protobuf version three is that uh, that fields that are it, it, I'm sorry, it allows fields that were that are not defined in the message definitions. So the reason that it does that allows these fields that are not defined in the message definition is uh, that was a design for future compatibility with extended versions of messages, but that can be used to open the door for things like smuggling attacks for applications that may look at fields when they weren't coded or programmed to look at those fields. So you can start to see that the, 
just the, the open nature of the protocol itself lends itself to some potential attacks. And so you need to think about the security of gRPC itself. And so what you can do is you can implement Nginx App Protect. It's a very high performant, scalable, efficient web application firewall that can protect all of this. And you can, you can deploy Nginx App Protect in many different um, places, but here, I'll just uh, put it conceptually right here, Nginx App Protect. Um, and so what Nginx App Protect does is it's designed to protect modern gRPC applications closer to the service application, which that empowers the dev, the DevOps, to manage security as a code and leverage their native tools, right? Um, Nginx App Protect has, has an engine, a security engine, that runs deep inspections of the gRPC messages on the wire. It also pr uh, parses the, the protobuf uh, messages and it detects malicious data in the headers and the payloads, including all of the nested and complex data structures. Uh, and this inspection is performed for any request um, and applies the attack uh, detection mechanism for each API call parameter. So it's uh, it's a very uh, you know in-depth um, inspection. Uh, it also Nginx App Protect also uses the IDL file, the IDL that we talked about a second ago, um, to set the security policy itself. So it doesn't require any extra configuration to protect these gRPC services. Um, so. Updating the Nginx App Protect policy is super easy because the gRPC um, protocol uh, files are frequently updated as part of the CI/CD process, and Nginx App Protect consumes that update. So every time that file is is updated as part of the CI/CD process, Nginx App Protect consumes that update and it enforces it immediately on the traffic. So your applications always stay protected. Um, with the most up-to-date security policy that they could possibly have, right? So it's good to use gRPC. It's very fast. It's very efficient. There's a lot of great reasons to use it, but you need to also consider the security of the protocol itself, and that's where Nginx App Protect comes into play. So thanks for watching this Lightboard lesson video with us today. Hey, if you like this thing, you can click up here on our DevCentral logo and subscribe to our YouTube channel, and we'll see you guys out there in the community.